Larry, if that's your real name, take those, shuffle them up for me. Make sure they're not in any particular order. <laughs> Larry, I'm just making a fool of you because they're forks. You don't have to shuffle them. <laughs> Larry, I'm going to spread these out. I want you to like, pick one. <laughs> okay, take it. Make sure I didn't swap it on you. Don't, please don't bend it. Otherwise, it makes my job look oh, less interesting. Pretty strong, right? Not too bad. Pretty straight. You tested it out. How many of you have heard of psychics who can buy metal with their minds, like in the Matrix where the kid makes a spoon twist? We're going to try duplicating that right now. Watch. If I just begin shaking it, you're going to see something weird happening right here. You can see one time slowly beginning to melt downwards until it's a polite tea drinking fork. A little gentle shaking. You can see it getting softer. You can see it getting wobbly. That was just for Larry. I'm just kidding. If I can honestly just shake it and get it to bend, I'd be the guy up on stage. A little gentle rubbing. You can see it bending upwards. A little more. A little more. A little more. I like how people laugh when I'm stroking a fork. Yes, I'm stroking a fork. Because they have some dirty minds and you don't have to be Scott Xavier to predict that one. A little more. A little more. Insert random Viagra joke here. <laughs> All the women nervously laugh. We're going to bend this back. Pretty straight. What's your name? Jane. <laughs> All right, Jane, if that's your real name, stand up. Come join me up here. Go, Jane. Jane, if that's your real name, everybody's got a pseudonym today. It's crazy. I was going to ask him what his name is. If he said Jane, I was a little worried. Jane, I want you to hold open your hand pretty straight. Close your hand around it. Hold it up. Have you seen The Matrix where the spoon twists in the kid's hand? Okay. This is going to take some imagination. I want you to begin feeling a twist. It might burn and hurt really bad. You're not bothered by that? No. I'm not the first guy to tell you it's going to burn and hurt really bad. <laughs> Obviously not. That's okay. We're not going to judge. I want you to feel a twist. Can you feel a twist? Takes imagination. I have none. Jane, you have no imagination, obviously. That's okay. I want you to feel a twisting. Can you feel a twist? Yes. Amazing! Great imagination, Jane. <laughs> Open your hand. Look what happened. Twisted 180 degrees in her hand. Larry, take a look at that. Try untwisting that for me. See if you can bend it back. <laughs> Even with pliers and a vice, it's next to impossible. The thing is obviously fine silverware stolen from the kitchen back there. A little more gentle shaking, you can see another tanning time slowly beginning to bend until it's a cool surfer fork. Got two there, so if we can get it to go again. A little more all the time, twist or bend, droops downwards a little bit. A little more, you are left with the cool souvenir. Cool. Oh, I get one of my own. You get one of your own, yes. Everybody give a round of applause. I would say probably about 20 some odd years ago. I used to travel with my sister, and we used to always go on family vacations. And one of the things we used to do is we'd get these cheap, like, hematite marbles from, like, Native American jewelry shops and stuff. We thought it was the coolest thing. We used to play guess which hand the rock was in. We'd stick it in one of our hands, and we used to sit there, and we'd be able to tell. Well, it was like a 50-50 shot. It wasn't that impressive. <laughs> but we would actually try and guess which hand the coin was in. We're going to try doing that now with a $50 bill. We actually graduated to coins. We started out with hematite rocks, then we went to coins and we would do it with dollar bills too. Why? Because it looked kind of fun and we were a bunch of nerds and we were on family trips. I mean, how much fun is a, a family trip with nothing to do when you're traveling halfway across the Southwest? Do we have a, anybody would like to win a $50 bill here? Sure. Right here. Sure. <laughs> What's your name? Jenna. Jenna. Oh my gosh, it's my sister Amy's name. Jenna. <laughs> Join me up here. <laughs> it's a joke, Jenna. <laughs> there will be slips notes after the show, don't worry. I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to ask you to place it behind your back. And now I want you to turn this way towards me. Excellent. We're going to do, actually, that was pretty good. Perfect. If this is still working. I hate talking into these mics, it sounds crazy. What I'm going to ask you to do now is I'm going to ask you to place it in one of your hands. We're going to play three out of three tries. If I get this right, three out of three, it's still mine. If you get it, you get the coin. Or you get the 
50, whatever it is. It just has to be in one of your hands. You can't place it in one of your pockets. Deal? I want you to place it in one of your hands. And I want you to place it out in front of you like this. Well, preferably <laughs> you want both of your hands closed. Okay. Otherwise, it's way too easy. It's way too easy. What's your name? Cut her off. Amy. Amy. Okay, Amy. No more booze for this one. All right. My show does get better the more you drink, but it gets a hell of a lot easier on me, too. Okay, place both your hands in front of you like this. Tightly. Doing it tightly. There's way too many jokes for making it way too easy on me. I want you to spread your hands out like this. Like this. Like this. Like this. I want you to think. Is it in this hand? Is it in this hand? I want you to think in your mind. Which hand it's in. And the weird thing is, I don't know if you guys are watching this, but her nose is giving it away. It's in this hand. Open it up, show everybody. Hold it out. Show it to everybody. In her hand. There you go. Her nose is giving it away. Kind of twitch. She was trying to mess with me with my eyes. Now, I want you to pay attention this time. I want you to place it in your back again, and I want you to pull them out in front of you again, like this. Take your time. As long as it's in one of your hands, it's completely fine. I get paid by the hour. You only have two hands. <laughs> I only have an hour show if you want to mess around. All right, is it in this hand? Once again, think in your mind. Is it in this hand? Is it in this hand? I want you to tell me with your mind again. Now, some people would try to mess around. That is the goofiest look I've ever seen all through this. Okay. Some people would try messing with me and placing it in the opposite hand. But I'm going to say you're not that original, not that creative. I'm going to say it's in this hand. Am I correct? I'm sure that everybody has got it right. Last chance. I want you to place it behind your back. I want you to place it in one of your hands. Are you ready? Place it in front of you. Yes, you have to place it in one of your hands. Otherwise, it's cheating. Why do I assume you're not a stranger to cheating? <laughs> I'm teasing. Place it in front of you. Now I want you to cross your hands. Is it in this hand? Is it in this hand? Now, the strange thing is, right away, I said, I want you to place your hands in front of you. Most people would place the guilty hand to the bottom, which I'm going to believe you did. Show everybody. Hey. Wow. Everybody give a round of applause. You can have a seat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Excellent motor control. Obviously, you haven't been taking care of the uh, free open bar. Uh, no? Not enough yet. Not enough? All right. Let me get rid of these. Mark, what I want you to do in a second, I'm going to turn my back to you. Not because I'm being rude, but so I don't see the cards. I want you to fan the cards in front of you so you see all the cards. Let me know when you've done that. Good. Excellent. Okay, I want you to hold them up to your chest so I can't see them. Okay. <laughs> There's a low numbered black card. I think it was a club. Is it three? Three clubs? Correct. Universal sign for gimme, Mark. Give Are you what? married? Give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Go Mark! Uh, all right. I'm not there with you now. This is a creepy audience. We have no All right. Are you married? Yes. Then you should be used to this. True. <laughs> Getting a red card. She makes the money. <laughs> he just does the uh, taxes, which is totally cool. Uh, does everybody use the tax act software, by the way? Yeah, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Jeez, it would be horrible if you're like, no, I've got a private account. That would be horrible. Let's go with the uh, number of them. Maybe you could use it too. I would like to. High numbered red card. Is it an ace? Ace of hearts? Yes. Still the universal sign? Forgive me, Mark. <laughs> Slow reaction time. <laughs> it's the alcohol. We'll play it down the alcohol. Yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with another low numbered black card. I already did a club, so let's go with the spade. Is it a 2 2 of spades? Yes. 
Let's go with a, uh, I don't think I've done any diamonds. Is there a five, five of diamonds? Yes. Uh, getting two cards that are almost like the same. Do we have two that are the same value? I'm getting two sixes. Is it a six of hearts and a six of spades? Correct. <laughs> Let's go with a, the oddball. Is there a club in there again? Is it an eight, eight of clubs? Correct. I'm getting three cards that are shouting out to me. Do you have three cards with the same suits? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I'll take your horrible line as a yes. Is it a, um, a two, three, and a seven of diamonds? Yes. Wait, you got another card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait, are you messing with me? Is it a joker? It is a joker. Awesome. Mark, thank you. Since you changed it to Jane Tut momentarily, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I'm going to try peeking inside your brain. This is a trick that I learned. It's sort of like psychological profiling. We're going to draw a little grid here. And Frank, who I will now call Jane, I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I'm going to try peeking inside your brain here. Check, 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 check. There we go. I'll just hold it. Sounds better this way. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and we try peeking inside your brain. You have a random number. Does this number hold any significance to you, the number that you're thinking of? Yes. <laughs> so audience is really <laughs> kind of difficult. It's like pulling teeth. Okay. Is your number above 50? Yes. I'm going to say you're telling the truth on that one. There's an option to lie. There's an option to lie. You can lie anytime you want to. Um, blondes or brunettes, which ones do you prefer? Redheads. Redheads, nice. Oh, right. There you go. Are you a Mac or a PC? Mac. Captain Kirk or Captain Picard? Who's the better captain of the Starship Enterprise? Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure about that new Star Trek movie, how it's going to work out. Um, is it ever acceptable to wear white socks with sandals? Yes. <laughs> nice. Are you married? Yes. Have you and your wife ever fought about scented candles in the kitchen before? Constantly. Constantly. It's like the point of that, wasn't it? This could be the worst microphone I've ever used in my life. Do you see your number anywhere on there? No. No. What do you do for a living? Tax. So you deal with numbers? Yes. You're not the accountant for this group, is it? Are you? No. No, that's not your job? Good, because I think my check is safe then. Break right, well, now call Jane. 11 plus 8 is 19. Plus 2 is 21. Plus 50 is 71. What's his number? Show everybody. It is 71. It is 71. <laughs> Why does he pick the number 71? Does it hold any significance, any value? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Frank, have you been drinking before the show? I'm just wondering. Let's keep going. So all these add up to 71. Well, we're not even close to being done. 12 plus 7 is 19. Plus 1 is 20. Plus 51 is 71. 4 plus 6 is 10. Plus 52 is 62. Plus 9 is 71. How about 5 plus 9 is 15. Plus 3 is 18. Plus 53 is 71. How about 2 plus 7 is 9. Plus 9 is 18. Plus 53 is 71. So vertically 71. How about 12 plus 50 is 62. Plus 8 is 60, 8 plus 3 is 71, 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 7 is 19, plus 52 is 71. This may be the worst microphone ever. I am just going to speak over this group. 11 plus 51 is 63, plus 4 is 67, plus 5 is 71. How about diagonally 71, diagonally 71, these 4 71, these 4 71, these 4 71, these 4 71. How about the four outer corners, just for Larry? 
2 plus 11 is 13, plus 5 is 18, plus 63 is 71. How about 50 plus 3 is 53, plus 8 is uh, 21, plus 50 is 71. 51 plus 7 is 58, plus 4 is 60, 2 plus 9 is 71. There's over 144 combinations of your number on there right now. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try something completely opposite. I'm going to ask you to open up somewhere towards the middle, put your finger on the page, expand out from your finger, find a nice big word, something like daiquiri. Let's go seven letters or more. When you have one, let me know. You got a big one, Frank? I have word? <laughs> yes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I walked right into that one, okay. <laughs> Close the book. So I don't know randomly where the page is. Everybody goes, oh, you might know what page I stopped on, whatever. See the first letter in your mind of this word. I'm going to make a prediction. What was the first letter? R. Really? I was getting an E. Am I being dyslexic here? Is that the next one? Was that the second letter, the E? It was. So you have an R E. See the next one in your mind? Huh. There was probably about 24 words on each page. It's probably 30, 40 sentences on each page. Probably 200 and some odd pages in that book. There's literally 60,000 words in that book. As I can tell from this audience, I have some time. So if you want to count, go ahead. What was your word? I was getting a receptionist. Am I correct? Excellent. Oh. Nice. What's your name, then? Annie. Annie, join me up on stage, please. Dee, Annie. Dee, 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 Annie. And how about you in the blue? What's your name? Jason. Jason? No. Blue. Yeah, Jason. Carrie. 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 Carrie and? Danny. Danny? Danny. Really? Yes. Or Jane. No. Or Jane. Well, you don't have an Adam's apple, so. I mean, I didn't do the check or anything. Danny, I'm going to give you a coin, and Carrie, I'm going to give you a coin. Make sure they're normal, silvered out. Yeah. Can you put down the <laughs> beer before coming up to help me up on stage? Yikes, diehard drinkers here in Iowa. I like that. Danny, I want you to make sure this is a normal blindfold. I like the one you have at home. It's like the one I have at home. Yeah. Doesn't have leather and rhinestones? Yeah. No. Okay. I don't know if you guys watch Oprah as much as I do. On Oprah, there is a kid who lost his vision due to cancer. Even though his eyes were surgically removed, he could still detect objects using echolocation. He'd walk up to him and go, ah, 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 and he'd be able to detect them. It was the creepiest thing I've ever seen. We're going to try duplicating that right now. Yes. You do need two ears to do this. No, no, I'm serious. If you only have hearing in one ear, you can't do it. I would think one ear would be just. No, because you're doing that. Yeah, it's, it's, she's actually correct. It's kind of creepy. We're going to try doing that right now. Danny, we need to be a piece of duct tape. I forgot you understand sign language, so you probably have met people. Who Audiology do this. was my major. Audiology was her major? Yeah. It's the creepiest group I've ever met. <laughs> Very, we're going to get rid of this. Hey, I'm just the janitor. <laughs> that explains a lot, too, then. Okay. Carrie, I am going to give you a piece of duct tape. Danny, I'm going to give you another piece of duct tape. We're going to slap this up here. And Terry, I'm going to give you a piece of duct tape. I'm going to give you that. Don't pretend like I'm the first guy to ever give you duct tape with a blindfold. Some money. Hey, you walked into that, Danny. I had to put myself in college. Taking my coat off. Okay, yes. Uh, does anybody have a bill of some denomination? Preferably a higher number bill, a five times fifteen dollar bill. Yes, but it's mine. It's not going to be impressive if you know it's mine. Anybody? Bill of some denomination. Rob, you got one? Sure. Excellent. All right. Give that to Carrie. Carrie, grab it. Dan Join. I'm going to ask you to do something weird. Once I'm blindfolded, I want you to go into our audience. I want you to grab a small, medium, and large size bill. It could be, uh, I'm sorry, item. Not a bill. I was used to this bill. A small, medium, large size item. We're going to try something a little unordinary. Uh, it could be anything from a bottle of beer, if you want to be ordinary, to a cell phone. Something unique that I could not know about. Carrie, once I'm blindfolded, I want you to write, here, I'll give you this. 
a nice big word, four or five letters going across here so everybody in the back of the audience can see, okay? I'm going to give you a dry erase sharp marker. I guess it's not a sharpie. And uh, four or five letters. Plus, let's see if I have a deck of cards. I should have a deck of cards somewhere around here. You would think. Frank, would you mind just coming up here for a second? Again. You're in the front row. It's easy, though. Okay, pickle. Got it? Gotta remember it? Throw it up on top. It now becomes the middle because we'll bury it in there. You're done for a couple of seconds. I'm going to ask you for your help in a second. So if you could come up here and help me out. Not yet. You're good. I'm good. You're good. Thank you. All right, Danny, can I have your coin? And your piece of duct tape. We're going to place this in the center of the duct tape as such. We're going to slam it into my ocular cavity. Insert random pirate joke here. Arr. What's a pirate's favorite letter? R. No, C. Can I have you? <laughs> there will be cliffs notes. That joke will be explained to you. I will take your piece of duct tape, which is slammed here. We'll slap this over here. Place it in the center, like this. And can I have your piece of duct tape to any which should be on your sleeve? Excellent. We will place this over all of this. And Carrie, can I have your piece of duct tape? Excellent. We will place this under my nostrils because one smart ass kid once said I could see through my nose. <laughs> Just for that little fucker. <laughs> my show gets a little bit more strange. Danny, can I have your piece of, or, I'm sorry, your, uh, you should have the blindfold, right? Yeah. If you could grab the small, medium, and large size objects from the audience, I'd appreciate it. We will slap the heavyweight sleeping mask over all this. If you're wondering why I'm duct taping my eyes shut, I want you to place your finger on your eyelid. And I now want you to try opening up your eyelid. With the slightest bit of pressure, you can't open up your eyelid. It's impossible because your eyelid has no muscle. It's impossible to do. And if you do, it means you have contacts on, but I don't have contacts on. And then you would get your finger in your eyelid, which would, or your eyeball, which would be horrible. <laughs> Carrie, can I have your, what is it? The duct tape is left, right? Sure. Thank you. And if you could write that four or five letter word, I'd appreciate it. We will take the duct tape and we'll slap it all around here. Is this why your hair is so short? Yes. It's not called a receding hairline. It's called a work-related injury. Thank you. <laughs> Place some more duct tape over there, just because uh, Rob thinks I can see through all this. And then we start crying. We'll take his I'm going to assume, Danny, you missed it, but that's okay. Yeah. Danny, I want you to take the first item, and I want you to place it on your palm like this. Place it in between my hands, sort of as if they were a scanner. Does that make sense? Is it on your palm, in between my hands? Is it there? No. Okay. If I said this item came from a man, would I be correct? Originally, a man placed this on the table. His name is Jerry. I want to say this is a very cheap item. You guys need to get it. It'll go up in dollar value. Take it from Rob, who gave it 20. Very good move, Rob. Uh, is this a piece of, like, a pepper it. container? Am I right? Yeah. Like a pepper packet? Excellent. Second item, please. Is it there? Yeah. This item came from a woman. Am I correct? I believe it's a woman named Teresa who placed this on the yes. table. I want to say it's circular. I want to say it's almost like an ornament. Is it an ornament? Correct. Excellent. <laughs> Third item, please. Is it there? Yes. This item came from a woman, am I correct? Yes. <laughs> no, a man who thinks about women often. He didn't let me finish. <laughs> if I recommended odor eaters, would this make sense? <laughs> Because I prefer Nikes, but I'm going to say this is a gym shoe of some sort. Am I correct? Uh, I wouldn't say gym shoe, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you call it? What would you call it? Seriously. Uh, would you wear I'm this in the fashion, gym? I wouldn't. I'm not a fashion expert. So I'm That's okay. Sure. Danny, it was a shoe, though. Am I correct? <laughs> and it does need an odor eater. Am I correct, Danny? <laughs> oh, yeah. Danny, you can give those back to whoever you found them from. Everybody give a round of applause. Thank you, Danny, for your help. Can I have the word in my hand facing out towards the audience, please? Is it there? Yeah. Can I have the marker? 
Okay, so it's facing out towards you. I have two coins over my eyes, duct tape over all that. Heavyweight sleeping mask, a piece of duct tape underneath my nostrils, because one smart ass kid once said I could see through my nose. Now if I could see, I couldn't tell what this is because it's facing out towards you, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna say the marker top just fell off too. It's okay. <laughs> if I said I need to increase mine, would that make sense to you? Because I'm getting income? Terry, <laughs> could you grab that top for the marker, wherever it is? Because otherwise it's going to dry out. Thank you. And uh, you still have a bill, am I correct? Yes. Excellent. Can you place the bill in my hand so that the president is facing up and out towards the audience? Okay, so if I fold it in half, I did peek and I did see it was a 20 before I got blindfolded. So it's not a big surprise that it's a 20. But I'm going to say on a 20, if the president is facing up and out towards you, the serial number should be down here. Am I correct? Can you see it? And I can feel right now, it feels like a J. Am I correct? Is it a G? Is it a 6, 9? No. 8, 9. Is it a 2, 2? Yes. 7, 1? Yes. Is it a 4, 6? Yes. And a B? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. Um, thank you. Hold on to that for one second. Don't give it back to him yet. Don't give it back. Frank, where are you? I'm over here. Frank, can you place your hand in, inside of my hand like that? On it? Yeah. Yes. We're going to try tracking down your card. Frank, are you still here? I'm here. Place your hand inside of my hand. I think I got it. Trick my dog, Tom. Was that your card? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> That's each person's card. Now the card everybody's been waiting for but me. Ah. Uh, ooh. Ouch. Ah. Ah. Yeah. More duct tape under all this. You can see the sleeping mask still in place. No holes, no puncture marks. Ah. Oh, uh, you lose your eyebrows too. Now you don't have to. If I asked you, do you think you could draw this? Do you think you could draw this? Not very well. That's okay. We're not going to judge you. Come on up here. Everybody, give them a round of applause. Can you give this to you? I'm going to ask you to stand right here. I'm going to give you a Sharpie. Okay. And I want you to begin drawing this item. Is this something ordinary? Sure. <laughs> really? It depends on your perspective. Perspective, yeah. Perspective, true. We do have a strange audience today. We try. <laughs> it takes unique individuals to write tax software. What is it that you drew? Because I think I drew it upside down. Yes. Wow. They're right what I drew. That's pretty good. What is it that you drew? Batman. Oh, you drew the bat symbol. Let's show everybody. I actually went for the whole Batman. That's cool. <laughs> it's cool. I like one person who thinks it's cool. The rest of you guys are not. Why would you pick 33? <laughs> Seriously, just. Do we have anything set up? Well, you just said that on your own. You said 33. But you, you said you objected two different numbers. <laughs> Have you been drinking tonight? Oh, yeah. Is that your name? Nope. You used me, yeah, I used you for the shuffling card thing. I didn't tell you to pick the number 33, is that correct? 
No, but you just picked it right now when I said it. Yeah, but <laughs> does it hold any significance for you, Jen? Yeah. Why? What's it? <laughs> Jen, come here. Join me up on stage. Give her a round of applause. I'm going to tell you something. 1933 is when my grandparents actually got married. What we have here is we have a lock on this bag, on this man bag. I want you to enter. There, we're going to enter the date. You can see here. One. And enter a nine. We can find the nine. I don't even know where it's at. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, it's backwards. Here, let's go here. One. Or six. Nine. Now you're judging my mathematics, you're right. And enter three. It's a three, correct? And another three. And look what happens. It opens up. What's inside? What's inside? Shaving No. Some of your grandparents. Have an iPad. An iPad. We can test it. No, you don't win the iPad. <laughs> Just like all the women in my life, after money. It's crazy. We are going to open this up. We're going to enter in my password. Hopefully you didn't see that. 1933? No, not that time. That was actually my dad's badge number because he was a Chicago cop. He technically didn't work in the crime lab, but that's okay. I did, but that's besides the point. We have a calculator on here because we're going to need this. If I told everybody to think of a four-digit number, got one? And now I want you to think of another four-digit number. And then I want you to divide it by a two-digit number. Obviously, having a calculator is going to help. I'm going to ask you first off to enter a four-digit number in there. It's OK. And now we're going to hit the times button. And uh, how about you? I want you to enter a four-digit number. You haven't helped me out yet. What's your name? I'm Zach. Okay, now we're going to, let's go add it. Add a two-digit number in there. Just enter a two-digit number. And now we're going to, I believe that's a divide. Uh, give me a single-digit number, name one. Seven. seven. We're going to enter seven. And now I'm going to enter the equals. Does that mean anything to you? What's that number? I'll tell you what. Uh, I can't see it. What's your name, Jen? Can you write that? Number on that board. Four two six six seven zero eight means nothing to you. Um, no. Hmm. Let's go home. Just leave this here for right now. I don't know if you know this. Have you guys noticed this? I've been wearing shoes this whole time. Phone number. And uh, inside my shoe, I made a prediction. Now, this is going to be kind of creepy. Nothing in my hands, first off. I'm going to kick off the shoe, a boot. Can you see something in there? Butter something eater. a little bit more smelly? It's a dollar bill. Eater. It's a dollar bill. 20. <laughs> no, but I stole it from your G string earlier. <laughs> Are you really going to mess with the guy on stage? I've made grown people cry before. It's funny. You can see something in there. Can you see the serial number? What's it say? It's a... Read it. 4266... 9. Wow. Means nothing? I'm going to show you something else. Guys, if I forget to tell you tonight, it's been a pleasure performing for your holiday party. But we're still not done with the show. Inside here, we have, let's go under camera. Before I came in today, we're going to hit here, which is all my gallery. You can see me in my car. And there's a picture of me. Not only is it a picture, but it's also a video. We're going to hit the play button. Ready? Hi, it's Scott Xavier. Uh, just wound up driving to the embassy. Um, Which is where we're at. In Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I'm performing for Tax Act Software. Thanks for hiring me. I'm going to be projecting a number into the audience. 
I think the person who comes closest to that number, who actually guesses that number, will be a female. Female? Probably not hard to guess at. Probably 50-50 shot. 50-50 shot. If you're not impressed, maybe she'll have shoulder length, brown hair. Shoulder length, brown hair. If you're still not impressed, maybe she'll have a red long sleeve shirt <laughs> with a black vest over it. <laughs> she will have on blue jeans with, I believe, gray shoes. They look like Crocs, but yeah, shoes, gray shoes. I think her name's who picked the daiquiri? You did, right? No, Steve. Yeah. Well, if you're impressed. still not impressed, maybe you should call a real psychic at 426 426 67 08 Extension 9, I guess. Extension 9, which was the serial number on the bill? Oh, yeah. That Batman would look great hanging up in your house, by the way. Maybe you should give it to Jen as a uh, gift for playing along. Who drew the oh, Batman? By the way, uh, remind me to take out the Jokers, otherwise that card trick might come out a little awkward. Thank you and good night. <laughs> How was the show? Good. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Now we're not joking too much. I'm the guy with the knife, right? I don't know if you know this, but... They say when life gives you lemons, find somebody who life has given vodka, vodka to and make vodka and lemonade. <laughs> or, you can cut deep within the pits, if that's anatomically correct, I'm not sure, of the lemon. You can see juice, you can see pulp. You're going to see something besides the seeds, you're going to see something a little bit more valuable. Rob, right? Yeah. Rob, you gave the 20 up, am I correct? I did. Come on up here. <laughs> Rob, I want you to see this thing that's a little bit greener, a little bit more valuable. All right. Just drop that down the hole. I don't know what that hole's doing on stage there, but it's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's testing me. While I was blindfolded, I kept going, whoa, feel crazy. I'm going to fold this open, and you're going to see something on there. Rob, can you verify? Is that your signature? It is. Rob, oh. you have no. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, it is a pleasure to meet you.